Hello, hopefully you can see us all and hear us clearly. Sorry about that, it took a minute to get everything to go. We are gonna go ahead and invite Jenny on and hopefully we'll see her in a second. Um, but today what we've got are just some grains. And so we're gonna go over some diabetic friendly grains, the different portion size that you wanna look for um, as you're adding them to your salads, cause it is salad month and we'll keep moving forward from there. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type them to the chat on the right and we will answer those the best as we can. But we're gonna go ahead and flip around and Chef Katie can get started with what we've got today. Hi, everybody. Welcome. As Stephanie said, we're going to be doing grain salads today. And so our focus today is going to actually be on a um, caprese grain salad. So um, if you want to take a look here, we've got some wheat berries. Um, I've already cooked them. You can use wheat berries. Wheat berries are kind of hard to find, though, so feel free to sub um, whatever kind of grain you have available. Um, I would say good options to stub for this would be the most like it would be farro, um, but you could also use barley. That would make a really good one as well and add just a little different flavor um, while still keeping with your whole grain. Um, so yeah, what we did to cook it, make sure that you check whatever grain you're using, their cook time, because they will be different according to the grain. Um, this grain took a three to one ratio. So three cups of a liquid, we used some veggie stock and one cup of dry grain, and it made approximately three cups of cooked grain. So when you're measuring out your grain, make sure that you are measuring it or what you're looking for is from a wet standpoint, because as um, Jenny had pointed out in our correspondence, a lot of the times the nutritionals will be reported in dry format versus the cooked format. Yes, and so you do wanna pay attention to that before you get started also, because as those grains will pop up, if you happen to maybe overcook it or undercook it and you're not quite sure where it's at, that'll kind of change the measurement on it as well. Um, and so with these grains, as Katie mentioned, it's very similar to farro, it'd be similar to bulgur, and it is a whole grain. And so that's very important when you're trying to get in your more nutritionally dense carbohydrates. And so an exchange uh, for this would be about a half a cup. And then later on, we've got our quinoa, which would be closer to about a, a third to a half cup. So it is red quinoa. And so on both of these, you can see they've got that nice dark color to them. And a lot of the nutrients are on the outside of these grains. Um, and so if this one had been processed and it wasn't considered a whole grain anymore, it would be white and it would be a lot mushier. And so you lose a lot of texture and nutrition when you go for the more processed carbohydrates. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start assembling our grain salad. Um, we've got some balsamic vinegar, about a tablespoon. Um, and then we're going to go with um, remember last week we focused on making an emulsified vinaigrette. We're going to kind of throw that out the window today because you don't have to make a perfect vinaigrette to enjoy it. You just need to put whatever ingredients on it. They're going to make it taste the best. So we're going to go ahead and add about a tablespoon of oil as well. One to one and a half. We're going to do uh, about a teaspoon of chopped garlic. Um, you can as we've talked about before, you can make that work to your own taste. So, so whatever kind of um, seasonings that you prefer. And so garlic is lovely in it. As we've talked about, Katie and I are really big fans. And you do that based on what you like. But some Italian seasoning would be lovely. Just mm -hmm. some tiny red onions or shallot would work equally well. All right. So we're going to go ahead and chop some or slice some of our grape tomatoes in half so that we've got about, I'm going to go for heavy tomatoes. Um, and personally, that's kind of how I like to assemble my grain salads is I like to like go kind of equal parts veggie and grain because I like to be able to make that stretch out. And I, I like to enjoy a bit of grain on there. All right. And then we got some fresh basil. Um, so we're going to use fresh. If you don't have fresh, um, feel free to use dried. I put um, equivalents on the recipe that will get out to you guys. Um, so that you can easily do that. Basil is one of those herbs, though, that you really don't want to beat it up too much because it continues to uh, release the oils as you hit it with your knife. And so if you're continually chopping it too much, 
you're going to release a bunch of the oils onto your cutting board and it's not going to be as fragrant in your salad. And so you can see really cleanly there that like there's no green on Chef Katie's cutting board. It's just still the same color of the wood as we were chopping it on on the block. And so that's how we know that it's a nice fresh basil. We used it and um, processed it accordingly so you get the most taste and nutrition out of it and then that was a little bit of mozzarella and so just diced up mozzarella that we tossed in there um, but you could use any soft cheese in that instance yeah. and so you could easily use like a goat cheese instead or a feta if you preferred but that's all that we've got in there right now great question Jackie we're gonna do a little salt and pepper and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some green pepper to ours as well because I I'd like I said I'd like a little bit more veg in our green salad so for peppers I like to Cut the bottom off and cut the top. Just kind of run my knife all along it like this. And then the top part pulls right off. So you've got your two parts here. Run a slit down the side. And then you're going to just cut through all of these fibrous pieces. And you've got one big long piece of pepper then to work with after that. So then you can cut it into whatever size you want. This would also be really great if you roasted it or grilled it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whatever works best for you. If you want to roast it, just pop it over your, um, your if you have a gas burner, over your gas burner. Um, and then let it get kind of charred. Mm -hmm. And then you can put it in a little bowl and let it sit so that the skin will peel off. And so that's a really nice way to bring out the natural sweetness to a pepper. Um, by simply just trying it on the outside and adding some more depth of flavor to it and a little bit of smokiness without adding any sugars in to your dish. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just give this a stir. As you can see, all the flavors really are gonna pop out nicely. Another trick for just getting the fragrance of your herbs out, if you're using like dried Italian herbs, I would say go ahead and add your like vinaigrette ingredients, your vinegar and your oil to your grain while it is hot. And then that way, as it cools down after you cook it, it will soak up all those um, ingredients and then be much more, um, it's kind of like a soup. The longer it sits, the more of the flavor the grains are going to absorb. It does. And so it kind of, if you were to make this in advance and you were to keep it in your refrigerator, um, again, you would just want to put it in like an airtight container. And as that'll sit, it'll just keep absorbing and kind of deepening those flavors that you've got in there. So it mixes in really well. And, um, you know, you can keep it in the fridge, I'd say at least three to five days. And if you are starting to run low on it, you could very easily add it over a bed of lettuce. You could go ahead and put over um, some tomatoes, just toss some more in there or whatever you have available. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just chop up some romaine for us to have a nice little fresh salad. We'll take this guy. Put him in our bowl. And then it sounds like we can hear you, Jenny, but I can't see you on my okay. end. We'll see if we can get you in there. You can hear me? But can great. You hear me? We okay, can well, hear you. So we've got, perfect. We've got the wheat berry right here if you want to add in any information about it. Well, I think you guys hit the fact that you have to be careful when you're working with grains because the food label reports serving sizes and dry measurements. And that's tricky because we don't eat them in dry measurements. You always want to go with about a third cup of wet or cooked grains to equal 15 grams of carbohydrates. Lovely. Thank yeah. You. Thank you so much, Jenny. We will, like I said, we can hear you. And so we'll ask you another question in a little while here. Okay. But we've got it over the bed of greens now. And what we've got is just a little bit of romaine for the base and then went ahead and just put the salad on top. Um, and so with that scoop, Chef Katie did about a half a cup and she went ahead and scooped in there and so that was mixed in with the cheese with the tomato with the basil and with the dressing um and so you really do get some longevity out of this salad toss it together too and you can see how lovely it looks and how nice everything will be coated. and the one reason i another reason i really like grain salads with greens is because i don't need as much dressing or any dressing if mm -hmm. i have a really well seasoned grain salad i can just pop it on some greens and then the natural um, kind of breakdown of the veggies or whatever we're doing, we'll just finish with a little bit on top there. And that um, just really kind of brings out exactly what you're looking for when it comes to flavor. And so what's really nice about this salad as well is you get a good serving of vegetables, probably a cup of greens that Katie tossed in there, if not a cup and a half. 
Um, with the tomatoes, you get a lot of antioxidants with the vitamin C and just with the different texture that it provides with these little cherry tomatoes. I've got the green pepper in there, adds a little more diversity to your vegetables. You've got a wonderful serving of whole grains from the wheat berry, and then you get a little bit of protein and a little bit of fat from the mozzarella cheese. So it makes it a very balanced salad um, once you've got everything set and done with this recipe, which is fantastic. That's right. And it then- is such a nice plate method meal. I love that it has all the macronutrients. And if you're worried about the carbohydrates from all the non-starchy vegetables, most of you know you don't need to worry about that. They aren't going to raise your blood sugar. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and you do you get a great fiber from using that whole grain on it, which is really important. All right, so we're just going to go to our second option, which is a little bit more of like a Southwest flair. And in all honesty, we just decided to do it because we had so much stuff in our fridge that went so well together that we were like, why not? We can demo this. So we had some red quinoa here that we needed to use up. So again, we cooked that um, according to the package. Um, Red quinoa does look a little bit different when it's done than white quinoa. White quinoa looks like it's all opened up and the germ has come out of the um, shell. But red quinoa doesn't fully look like that when it's done. As you can see, you'll see some kind of emerging from the germ, but not all of them. So just make sure that when you think it's done or before you think it's done, you give it a try. And then... um, And so, like Katie mentioned... We'll get in really close here. And what you kind of call that is the halo. So you can see towards the top and towards the middle where that white um, kind of germ has expanded out of it. And so that is a really good clue to this being a little bit closer to done. All right. So we're just going to use our top and bottom extra pieces of the pepper to toss in here. So I have a question for you. Of course. So I find that red quinoa is much more forgiving when you cook it than the white quinoa. It holds its shape a little bit better. I think that's because it doesn't fully pop open, Jenny. So like you don't get that mushiness from it. Yeah. So I would suggest that if anyone's trying quinoa, try the red or the black over the white because it's going to hold up better. And most of the labels of the packages of quinoa say to rinse it. And, yes. and when I rinse it, it holds water. So I add less to the pot as far as the liquid goes. Otherwise, it's kind of soupy. Yeah. 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 And that's spot on, Jenny. That's exactly um, how that quinoa will cook. I know they'll sell it in the different um, kind of individualized packages, but sometimes if you're fortunate, you can find the three different grains together. And then that way when it cooks, it's also very giving. So it's a great way to kind of expand your palate and to try a new grain. And it is also very high in protein, which is kind of quinoa's um, big push that it got a couple years ago that made it this, you know, kind of something that we had all around in different markets instead of a specialty grain or a specialty um, just kind of Produce, yeah. Yeah. And As you a vegetarian, can, I, I try to sub it in when I can, for sure. I can get this at Kroger. This is the bag that I mm-hmm. have. And when you compare the, the nutritional value of quinoa to some of the other greens, you're going to find that it's higher in fiber. And like mm-hmm. Stephanie said, it is a complete protein. So you're getting really nice protein from the quinoa as well. Yeah, it's fantastic. And so it's been long growing in the Andes. I'm up in the mountains. And I think that has to do a lot with its strength from the climate to it, that you get so many nutrients out of that little tiny seed, which is just fantastic. All right. So all I've added to our grain is um, the pepper ends from our uh, caprese. And then I added a little bit of lime juice and a little bit of olive oil and some more garlic. I'm gonna add some tomatoes to that as well. And then we had some black beans to use up. And like Chef Katie mentioned, these were just um, different items that we had in our refrigerator that we've used for different demos throughout the week. And so it's a great way to just kind of use up the ingredients that you already have. Make those flavors work for you. So what you wanna remember when you're adding ingredients, especially like black beans, is that they're really great plant-based protein. And that's awesome for our health, but they do raise blood sugar. So make sure that you know about a half a cup of beans by themselves has about 15 grams of carbohydrates and make sure that you account for that when you eat the finished product. Yeah. Spot on Jenny. Um, With these ones also, so you can cook beans as you would cook the grains, but what we went ahead and did was just open up a can of black beans. 
um, with those black beans, we went ahead and rinsed them after we opened it. And so I think we touched upon that last week. Um, but when you rinse off those vegetables after they've been sitting in the can in the brine, you eliminate at least 50% of the sodium to it. And so that gives you the ability to make this a little bit healthier all the way around and lower in sodium. And then you can re-season it to your personal liking. All right. So we went ahead and assembled our green salad. It looks lovely. And then we're going to go ahead and chop down our uh, romaine lettuce head, just like the other one. Um, with romaine, when you have a romaine heart, I find it easiest to get bite-sized pieces by just kind of running my knife through one side, doing a quarter turn, and then doing that again. And that just essentially splits the whole head in quarters before you even start. So you're not trying to break down big pieces of lettuce later on. Because um, yeah, salads can sometimes be fun to eat. You don't yeah. always look so pulled together when you're eating big leaves of lettuce. I know what I'll do with my nieces as well is if we've got something like romaine or like a butterhead lettuce that's easy to tear, I'll just thin them down and have them kind of rip up the leaves. Yeah. And so it's a great way to, um, you know, kind of get the kids involved if you want or the grandkids involved or if you've just got some time and it's really pretty soothing <laughs> to sit down and just tear those leaves to the size that you want them to. All right. So we'll go ahead and get our plate together. While we have a little bit of a lull, I do want to let everybody know that this is happening, this cooking demo is happening every Tuesday at noon. There might be a little bit of a change in platform so that we have a little bit more consistency with the technology, but we'll keep you all informed. And then we'll have a longer demo, 45 to 60 minutes long on June 25th at 10 a.m. So I will send an invitation out for that and it will be on the Mobile Kitchen's Crowdcast account so you can find it easily. Thank you so much, Jenny, for that kind of friendly reminder. So as we mentioned, you can rewatch these videos as they go. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and we'll answer those um, you know, as timely and as best of our ability as we can. All right, so I'm gonna add some avocado to this salad so Steph and I can have a real nice lunch. Right. And then... Very balanced. One of these days, once we're able to gather again, we'll bring Jenny in to join us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to pile it on there. If you like some cheese, we've got, we had some cheese to get rid of, but I mean, look how pulled together that is. And, and one thing I also will add about red quinoa is that I really find red quinoa to be a wonderful alternative to like ground beef in a mm -hmm. taco. Um, so I'll make like taco seasoned, um, red quinoa and it kind of looks like it, how it, um, breaks up. So if you cook it and then kind of simmer it with some tomatoes and taco seasoning, it makes a really great plant-based protein that easily could substitute for like your ground beef or um, if you're kind of over beans as your plant-based um, sort of protein option, yeah. that's a really good way to make your tacos or something like that happen. And it does have a lot of flavor to it. And so it's got a nice nuttiness that um, is just naturally incorporated with the quinoa and specifically that red quinoa or the black quinoa. And so it's great to add in as that protein. It's just fantastic. For sure. And so we've got our two salads here. So this one in the front are kind of um, just general pantry items of using up what you've got and what you have available. And then this one in the back is our caprese grain salad that we've got the recipe that'll send out to you soon. And we'll go ahead and we'll type something up with our um, kind of spur of the moment salad here with the red quinoa. But if you have any questions, feel free to keep typing them on the right. And then Jenny, I'm gonna turn it over to you real quick before we okay. wrap up. Thank you. Um, I do have a question that I'm just gonna say over the, over the live broadcast to Tracy. Are we going to be sending out an evaluation to everyone who is attending the live demo today? And if so, please look out for that. Um, if you have any suggestions for us, particularly if there's something wrong with your audio or your video, um, we do need to know about that. We want to make this, you know, a wonderful weekly thing that you look forward to and then is broadcasted well. So you can send me um, suggestions, either email if you have my email over my chart. If you have a my chart message from me, all you have to do is reply to it and you can give me um, all your thoughts. I would really appreciate it. And I think Katie and um, Stephanie would as well. Um, yes. Again, this is a collaboration between the James Mobile Education Kitchen, the Diabetes Metabolism and Research Center, Diabetes Education. 
And we're lucky to be sponsored by the OSU Wexner Medical Center Healthy Communities Obesity and Nutrition Steering Committee. And I think those words were put on the chat, but this has um, been a wonderful opportunity to get all these groups together and offer some, some great practical tips. Um, there aren't a lot of questions about diabetes that are coming across, but that doesn't mean you, you don't have them. So if you want to get on later, replay the video, you can add to the chat and you can ask your questions and I promise I'll get back with you. Thank you so much, Katie and Stephanie, um, for working through everything today and presenting such beautiful, healthy food. It looks wonderful. I made some quinoa here and I've got the balsamic on it and I can't wait to make my own version. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us and for all your great information and feedback, Jenny. And we hope to see you all at noon next Tuesday. Yes. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye.